All right, Buenos Dias, mis amigos. I got a lot of things I want to go over today. I don't know that I'll go over all of them, but I'm going to try to be quick on each point that I want to make this day. All right, so let's go. line in at the grocery store that, that's not a sign that Jesus is coming is the latest advance in a biohacking technology that is steadily becoming a part of normal life in Sweden. The company in Wisconsin offered employees microchips to replace ID badges. It's hosting a chip day party to uh, implant the devices in the employees. And our guy Ron Mott is at the party. Hey, Ron. Yeah, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, um... It, now here's the thing if everybody in the whole world got a microchip implanted in their skin it still would have no relevance to the mark of the beast none whatsoever none whatsoever all right so Let's destroy that idea real quickly. And just so you know, uh, the mark of the beast in the forehand, or I'm, I'm sorry, in the hand or in the forehead, this is talking about your deeds and your thoughts, your beliefs, and the things that you do. Okay, the hand and the forehead represent those two things. They are symbolic, and anybody that is into politics, they worship the beast. All right, that's all it is. It's real simple. Okay, so let's go check this out here. <clears throat> In Revelation 3, I'm sorry, Revelation 7, verse 3, it says, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads now you know this is not the angels coming down and stamping something on our foreheads it's not implanting something in our forehead these all have spiritual meanings but the natural man will not understand it and that's the beauty of the Bible that those that lack faith will automatically lack understanding of the Word of God. All right, so let's go to the next one. Um, here, I, I don't even remember. I just go over some things and I think, oh, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. So let's go here. Hold on to this fellow here. And I'm wrote 2230 so I'm not sure what he says but it's JT follows JC and uh, Tartaria let's see Tartaria 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 Tarta Tartan Tartan no Tartaria okay Tartaria is a code word for preterism. 
All right, I, I don't, I don't know that this guy believes preterism or not, but uh, it has something to do with mud floods. Okay, and so I, I want to play a little bit of what this guy says here and comment on it. Here in Rio, crazy buildings. Who did that? Where's that building now? They dynamited it? Whatever. The world, the world's fair stuff is, is totally sus. It's sus. Okay, but biblically, what evidence do you have that Jesus came back, ruled for a thousand years, and then he did what? I see. I think I think that's where like I really struggle with the idea of like that he came back, and but then he's where? Because the Bible does not say that Jesus comes back rules for a thousand years and then hides for a minute like jesus is not going to hide when he's reigning on the earth so that's what i'm saying i don't i don't really buy that that that, that the millennial kingdom has already happened jesus is somewhere else besides the earth that we don't know he's here because like i said biblically it does not say anything about that so like and you know and i and i honestly do think that i'm not going to question anybody's uh heart and those and those kind of uh, like basically theories, but when you really think about it, like we're talking about our blessed hope is the return of Jesus. So telling people Jesus already came back is kind of detrimental to a lot of people's faith. Well, it sure is, and he's he's spot on. That's our hope is that Jesus comes and puts an end to this world. And delivers us into a new world of everlasting life without any of the evil that we go through in this life in this world you know so like where is he you know like cuz I mean really think about it like that is our hope is like that that is literally the promise we've been given by God and that's what makes us Christians is believing that Jesus is going to come back and he's going to he's going to be the author and finisher of our faith. So when he comes back on the last day, on the day of the Lord, he's going to give us glorified bodies. Okay, so some people are saying that uh, yeah, I just something itching me. <clears throat> something in my brain just scrambled a little bit. Hold on a second. Author and finisher of our faith. So when he comes back on the last and he's going to he's going to be the author and finisher of He's going to be the author and finisher of our faith. He's going to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Ah, I'm getting picky. I'm getting downright picky. I'm getting real picky. But I'm going to... And I'm gonna I have to say it man Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith for those of us that are born of God he's not going to be all right for the unsaved person that is in the future going to be saved then Jesus is going to be the author and finisher of that person's faith. But right now, Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith for those of us that are born of God. Okay, I'm being too picky. Sure of our faith. So when he comes back on the last day, on the day of the Lord, he's going to give us glorified bodies. Okay, so some people are saying that he's already come back. All right, well, like I said, what evidence do you have of that? You know, like, I, I mean, I've, I've seen the things where people say, like, they changed, like, an I and a J in the, in the like, our, on the dates and things. They took a thousand years out or they added a thousand years, whatever. Oh, well, thank you. That's awesome. Um, but, yeah, so, like, I do believe they could mess with our timeline. But, again, like, we're, we're literally talking about... What, what it is to be a Christian is to believe that Jesus is coming back one day soon. You know, like, so, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if they 
let's say they added a thousand years to our calendar let's say they added you know 2,000 or 100 years or 50 years or 62 years if they took away you know maybe it's been 20,000 years since Jesus was uh, resurrected you know or whatever since he was born uh, our date uh, the year 2023 AD Anno Domini means the 2000 and 23rd year of our Lord Jesus Christ whether that's how accurate that is 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 irrelevant in my opinion <laughs> okay so yeah to say he's ha he's already come back I, I do think that that is actually uh, dangerous Christ is absolutely a person he he was he was crucified a real body and he came back to life his body was resurrected that, that's what we're putting our hope into is for ourselves to be resurrected he has led the way and we that are his will follow him he's not just energy he's he's left us the Holy Spirit which is spirit no but but Jesus the man is the son of man he's coming back and they're gonna see where they pierced him Jesus is Jesus is flesh. Well, the, I, I think that's the thing. Is like so, some people were saying that that the Tatarian buildings is evidence of Jesus, but like the millennial reign. But like, if you look at the Tatarian buildings, they don't have pictures of Jesus in there. They got pictures of of false gods in there. You know, so like it, it doesn't seem like evidence of a millennial reign because it's like if if Jesus and the saints are building these buildings, what's the evidence? I mean, that they're really cool, that they're really well done, really well made. Well, we know for sure, like based on the ancient structures, that people who didn't serve our God could build really well, build buildings really well. They were pretty good craftsmen. That's not evidence of somebody serving God. True. It's evidence of them serving a God. That's true. But remember, like I said, if, if you go back to, and this is an ancient <clears throat> angels conversation, is that if you believe the a book, first, first Enoch, first... And y you should not be so dog dumb stupid to believe in the book of Enoch. Enoch states that the watchers came down and they gave man technology. So... So obviously, so a lot of the way the buildings were built, I believe, came from knowledge from the watchers. So obviously, the, the angels could help men build buildings. And obviously, if you think about it, like all the pretty much, pretty much all the legends about how these buildings were built were from the giants. Giants built the buildings. That's what that's what the ancient people said. Giants built them. So the giants would have been related to the. Um, they had been related to the angels. So again, that, that lines right up with Enoch. So that's what I believe anyways. Yeah. <laughs> God. What? This idea of believing in fairy tales and science fiction is nonsense. <clears throat> in, but this is evidence that people want to believe anything today but the truth, the simple truth of the Bible. How does, I mean, like, so this has got, you, so you have to probably be a bot, Omni, because there's lots of historical evidence of Jesus, Jesus' existence. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, the, that's right, that's true. Just, uh, like I said, it, the fact that it's the year 2023 A.D. is evidence that the Lord Jesus Christ existed, and also the plain, simple fact is that Jesus is the most powerful name on earth, bar none. There is no other name that comes even remotely close to the name of Jesus. You might not believe he's God, but I mean, it's like, if you don't believe he existed, well, I mean, you don't believe anything. <laughs> I mean, like, there's lots of historical evidence that he existed. 
There's more evidence that he existed than Alexander the Great. Go look it up. Well, I mean, obviously all the Roman historians said he existed. You ever heard of Josephus? You ever heard of Tacticus? You probably haven't because you don't know anything. Like I don't know who those guys are. None of them. Yeah, like, go read a book. Yeah, I mean, go read the Bible and believe it. Believe it's from God because it is. Anybody who denies the existence of Jesus doesn't really believe anything. Oh, I don't believe he's real? Okay, whatever. That's, he, that's true. You're on the fast track to hell. You believe that you are God, and as God, you're going to die. And you have nobody to account for your life. He existed. He existed, and he was crucified. I mean, that's like... It, that, I mean, it, it's up to you to prove he didn't exist, because there's lots of people that say he did. Silly. Silliness. Oh, so Matt Flynn's back? Okay, and he, and, he, and he responded with the very same thing, so he's not going to... He's going to get muted now. This might be all I wanted to talk about. Yep, yeah, must be. I, I am not a pastor. Nope. I mean, I... I think we. I think many of us are called to preach, but I think I honestly think the the, the position of pastor is is not really biblical, anyways. But um. All right. So this is where he just fell off the cliff. Just it's like he stood up, and as he stood up, his shorts fell down to his ankles, and the whole world could see his bottom. All right. That's the most ridiculous thing. I mean, I, I think we, I think many of us are called to preach, but I think I honestly think the, the the position of pastor is is not really biblical anyway. Wow, what a statement! All right, so let's go. First of all, let's go to Exodus nineteen, and. God tells Moses to say to the people, Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So, a kingdom of priests. There is no difference between a priest and a pastor. Now let's go to hold this hold on before you get too excited. Before you have a hissy fit, just hold on. In first Peter chapter two, verse nine, it says, Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Talking about Christians, those of us that are born of God, those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, now we are called to preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature, preach. That's we're com commanded to do that. It's not a suggestion. We're being told by the Lord Jesus Christ to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. All right. So he says the pastor is not biblical. Well, there it is, Old Testament. Now I will give you pastures according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. But it's not biblical. And it, see, this is what's screwed up, man. He'll point to the book of Enoch, which cannot be the book of Enoch, from before the flood. It's impossible. It's provably fossil, uh, impossible. It's provably impossible. All right, and then ignore the Bible 
as if I mean as if you have no idea what the Bible says you know what the book of Enoch says you don't know that it's false but you know what it says and then you have no idea what the Bible says why are you wasting all your time reading anything and everything but the Bible and then you stand before God and everybody and talk about the Bible a book that you don't have any idea about why would you do that and so there's some pretty strong words against pastors as well right but it's clearly biblical now you see all these warnings in Jeremiah against pastures and then you equate it to what we see today and then you look at me as though I'm being too hard on other people hmm that's interesting to me all right and here that's the Old Testament even in the New Testament and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers so to say this is not biblical is just ignorance all right so let's move on all right okay I don't I forget what these guys talked about of what you're doing with the psychedelic thing, what I was doing with the Ark of the Covenant, uh, we came across uh, a, a sermon that was very interesting talking about this idea that uh, when it talks in Matthew 24 about this generation will not pass away before these things happen, mm -hmm. this pastor was putting forth this idea that it's talking about everything that's happened over the last 70 years, that we're really approaching the end of a generation that, that it's being talked about in Matthew 24. And I find that interesting because in 1949, you have the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is where you get the Book of Enoch, which has fueled a lot of the conversation around uh, as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the end times. That's, that's something we couldn't actually, as Christians, understand what the first century... Uh, church and what the what the authors of the New Testament were really referring to considering they referenced Enoch so many times it's I, I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about he, I thought he was going to talk about Matthew 24 all right which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Malil, which was the son of Canaan. By faith, Enoch was translated, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam. So, so many times. Scrolls, which is where you get the book of Enoch, which has fueled a lot of the conversation around... Uh, as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the end times. That's that's something we couldn't actually as. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. As it wasn't. <laughs> I can't even comprehend what some of these kids are thinking. Did I hear that right? The Dead Sea Scrolls, which is where you get the Book of Enoch, which has fueled a lot of the conversation around, uh, as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the end times. That's that's something we couldn't actually, as Christians, understand what... Wow. He did say it. He actually said it. As it was in the days of... So it's spelled two different ways, so let's do it this way. No. Alright. Here, you know what? There's a better way to do this, maybe. Oh. Let's do it this way. No, that's not gonna work. Oh, goodness sakes. Not even close. Alright. Um. Well, we can do it this way. Can we do that? We can, and then we can go. Oops, oh, that ain't gonna work. 
and then we can do this. Okay. So in Matthew 24 and Luke 17, and then um, even First Peter talks about it, doesn't? He? All right. So. Alright, let's do it this way. Let's do it. Wait a second. Let's do it this way. Alright, so in Matthew 24. Alright, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, remember what he said? Where you get the book of Enoch, which has fueled a lot of the conversation around. Uh, as in the days of Noah, so it will be in the end times. That's that's something we couldn't actually, as Christians, understand. Uh, wow, I mean, that's a hell of a statement. To pretend to be a spokesman for all Christians, as though you were the Pope. Uh, that's a just an arrogant arrogant proclamation we couldn't understand what this meant until the book of Enoch which came I mean that's stupid that's stupid now this kid now I don't mean to be mean but he needs to wipe the snot off his nose and read the Bible okay in Matthew 24 but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be for as in the days of Noah that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What's there to understand? How bad it was during that time? Is that perhaps where you're... I mean, you, you desperately want to believe UFO aliens were coming down and having sex with women? Is that, is that where your heart is? Is that where your heart is? Well, maybe that is a sign. But before the flood, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth in the every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually so what's there to know what's there to know you just what you don't want to believe that right you want to believe that sons of god are little green men from Mars and they were coming down and having sex with women all that they chose that's what you want to believe you don't want to believe that God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth you don't want to believe that you want to believe your fairy tale and some fairy tale that they dug up out of a grave 50 years ago a fairy tale of UFO aliens that was found in a place called Dead Sea Scrolls. That should be a clue all by itself. Dead Sea Scrolls. And alongside the Book of Enoch, they found, did they not, the Book of the Dead? Alright, so, I mean, this is just nonsense, man. Utter, absolute. These kids. just ridiculous uh, but it's evidence uh, that we're seeing this 
everywhere in today's world everywhere nobody wants to believe the Bible nobody all these guys want to believe anything and everything but the simple truth when Jesus talks about the end of the world he's warning us of deceivers not he's not warning us of little green men from Mars he's saying that many shall come in my name saying that I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many and what do we see today many in the world today claim to be Christian and deceive many now it's important it really is important to understand that these deceivers they themselves have been deceived and they believed it they wanted to believe a lie and so they teach a lie all right I, I don't know that there's any more I want to waste on this nonsense right here um, all right, no I don't there's no that's it you had one chance and you blew it okay let's continue now uh, I don't know who this guy is exactly Jonathan Kahn the con artist uh, let's hear what he says I, I don't remember even this here that's when the Lord said this is the next book you have to give an answer and oh. that me oh, I, I am honored today to uh, All right, let's let's do the intro here uh, bring again to this uh, Thursday stream Jonathan Kahn who is no stranger to pretty much almost all of you that are watching this channel if you watched my first interview with him and ever since then he has a new book that he has released that I believe is gonna be powerful today um, in his book he really answers a question could a 3,000 year old calendar of appointed days provide a secret to the most dramatic year of our lives even ordaining a plague and a national lockdown, days of fire and changing of the Supreme Court. What does the future hold? Is America heading for calamity? Is there hope? Have we been given a lost chance? Is it possible to change the history? Is there a blueprint that tells us that what we need to do to survive and stand in the face of what is yet to come? Jonathan Kahn has been named among the with the Billy Graham as one of the top spiritual leaders of the last 40 years to have radically impacted our world. He's written, all of his books have been New York bestseller. Not only he's a prolific writer, he also leads a gathering in Beth Israel at Jerusalem Center in Wayne, New Jersey and Hope of the World Ministry, an outreach of God's word and compassion to the world's most needed. Jonathan, thank you for being the greatest some some of a gun that has ever lived Jonathan Kahn being with me today I am so glad to have this conversation with you again well it's a real blessing to be back it was, it was great to meet you the last time and the Lord anointed it and it's an honor to be back with you ever since the release of last book you know the Lord has given you a new message in fact it started with a prophet that met you and gave you a message that this revelation this book that you're about to publish is going to rock the world it's going to be really powerful can you speak a little bit into that meeting with that unnamed prophet this guy over here he sounds a lot like that a lot like that father sarducci doesn't he but well oh, um i'm thinking which one because i've had a number of a number of unnamed prophets um it's interesting i'll tell you that that the the day that I finished the return of the gods, the day that I finished it. Well, oh, um, I'm thinking which one because I've had a number, of, a number of unnamed prophets. Unnamed prophets. Uh, the guy's a liar. Unnamed prophet means he made it up. Um, it's interesting, I'll tell you that that the, the day that I finished the return of the gods, the day. The return of the gods. Jonathan Kahn 
wrote a book called Return of the Gods and the mystery involves the gods well this goes against the Ten Commandments and what is this about? the most expensive book he's making a lot of money on that isn't he? okay so let's go let's go uh, let's go to Exodus 20 here the return of the gods man what are you teaching how many gods are there thou shalt have no other gods before me there's only one God there's only one God you shall not have any other gods before me now, anybody that says well it's okay to have other gods just not before God no that's not what that's talking about at all there's only one God and one mediator between God and men the man Christ Jesus there is one God that's it there are no other gods Satan is not a God there are not other gods there's only one God it's the Lord God Almighty it's Jesus Jesus is God Almighty. Wow. Alright. So enough of that nonsense. Let's get into these questions here. Um, immortal Souls. My Australian friend who is a Catholic and he gets upset because I am staunchly opposed to the Roman Catholic Church. Alright and he I, I'll have to read this later to be honest he says uh, let me tell you something Jimmy boy there's nowhere in the Bible where Jesus says don't pray like the Catholics so just so you don't bear false witness again because it's one of the Ten Commandments mind you the fact you are committing grave sin by bearing false witness against the Catholic Church Here's a basic way to save yourself the humiliation and error and be correct on what Catholics believe in two minutes flat. Alright, so, uh, you know, I mean, so this is in reference. He got all, he got his panties in a bunch when I exposed the fact that Jesus is speaking against Catholics right here in Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 when he says use not vain repetitions as the heathen do alright so um, so anyway, so the vain the vain repetitions, that's what the Jews and the Catholics they both do. Repetition seems simply means to it indicates emphasis on the importance of thoughts. I mean this is not look, this is not something I made up. This the whole everybody knows it. The Catholics are famous for it. They are the masters of vain repetitious prayer. Alright? And you know, you're pretending like you don't know that it's nonsense, okay? And uh, Wedden 105-1919, he's correct. Catholicism is not Christianity at all. Neither is Mormonism. Mormonism is not Christianity. They are not Christians. They, they call themselves Christians, but they're not, all right? 
and uh, so good job out of Wedden 105 one nine one nine okay so he's he says uh, the channel DTBM has a video call the final temple of God on earth he says Jesus is going to open a visitor center in his temple during the millennial reign the guy's insane yeah the whole world has gone insane so let's listen to some of the insanity so but what I want you to see is verse 7. Satan's hold on humanity is so strong. Now when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be released from his prison. Verse 8. He goes out and deceives the nations, which are on the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together. What's happening? Well, let me do it real quick. During the millennium, this happens. Jesus opens God's visitor center in Jerusalem. That's why it's got a, we have to have the millennium. The purpose is Jesus wants to evangelize the world. Is he? Yeah, so that's crazy, huh? The purpose of uh, him returning and opening up this visitor center is so that he can evangelize to the world. All right. So when Jesus says, go and preach the gospel, he just, he didn't really mean that. He should have said, don't worry, I'll come back, I'll open up a visitor center, and uh, I'll do it all myself. You just stay tuned to uh, CNN and Fox News, and keep voting for your favorite political leaders, and, you know, make sure you get your, make sure you get your shots. Ezekiel 40 through 48 describes this place. It's only briefly mentioned in Revelation 20 and verse 9. Ezekiel actually tells us the dimensions. It's a 25,000 cubit by 25,000 cubit visitor center with right in the middle a temple. And that's where Jesus, you can see him and come visit him. And that's where he reigns. And it's talked about all the way through the Old Testament and in Revelation 20. Yeah, and actually, it's just a slight... Uh, slight correction here it's actually it's not mentioned at all anywhere not in Ezekiel not in Isaiah not in Revelation 20 this idea of a millennial anything not mentioned anywhere there is no millennial temple there is no millennial reign mentioned or suggested or even hinted at anywhere in the Bible at all. Can you imagine a visitor center that's seven miles by seven miles with this giant temple in the middle? Uh, no. Not really. But the green part is what I like. This is what we're going to look like. Look at right here in Revelation 20. Look at verse 9. And this, this is such an application to us. And it's, well, I'll just read all the verses up to it. Uh, he deceives the world in verse 8, to the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, and gathers them together to battle. The number is like the sand of the sea, so basically the whole world marches against Jerusalem. And they went up from the breadth of the earth, and they surround, look at verse 9, the camp of the saints and the beloved city. So this is Jerusalem and the... Wow. Wow. All right, so what an idiot. What an idiot. Okay, so let's go. Oh, my goodness sakes. Let's go. Well, there's, a, there's two places I wanted to go to. I can't remember the other place right now that I wanted to go to. Oh, for dogs. I'm sorry, buddy. You're not getting up on there. Alright, I'm talking to my cat, apologies. Okay, so in Galatians 4, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Now let me check something. I, there was one other verse I wanted to share, and I don't remember. 
I think I was reading it this morning or last night or something. I don't remember what it was. I don't remember, but just let me skim through this real fast here. I want to skim through this and just see if there's something in here that I wanted to share that I don't remember. Ah, there, that's probably it. That's probably what. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the new name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Now, well, I talked about this yesterday. What was that that I talked about? Oh, wasn't this what I ta was talking about here? Him that overcome? Wasn't, oh, it was actually probably down here, wasn't it? To him that overcomes, will I grant to sit with me in my throne? And then, of course, who is he that overcome? The world right it's we ye are of God little children and uh, have overcome them for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world so we that are born of God have overcome the world it doesn't get any greater than that who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God so here in Revelation tw uh, 3 verse 21 to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame it's talking about those of us that are born of God right now we have overcome the world right now we sit on heavenly thrones yeah that's right bud and right now so right now we have overcome and him that overcomes will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall no go I'm sorry and he shall go no more out yeah thank you for that and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God which is new that's right new Jerusalem you got it which comes down out of heaven from my God all right the, obviously New Jerusalem is in heaven. No question about it. No question about it. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Oh, that's right. Oh, meow. Meow. That's right. You got it. Exactly. Good job. That's a good kitty right there. And so in Revelation 20, we read about um the at the end of the thousand years and they uh, the unsaved will compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city where is the beloved city it's above New Jerusalem is above and so also what happens when Jesus comes his angels gather together his elect right in Matthew 13 it talks about how the wheat are gathered into his barn into the Lord's barn we are lifted up into the air right we are lifted up into there it is into the air right but gather the wheat which is the saved into my barn so we're up in the air in heaven where the new city comes down and we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and then our enemy is gathered at our feet this is from Genesis to Revelation this is all 
throughout the Bible. <clears throat> and Genesis 3 verse 15, the Lord says to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying, destroying evil forever. Alright, so when it says they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, they are at our feet. They are gathered at our feet. In Revelation 3 verse 9, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. See, we're up in the air. They are at our feet. Right? This is from Genesis to Revelation all throughout the Bible. I, I mean, this is all throughout the Bible. I don't just mean a, here in there I mean it's everywhere it's the whole purpose of life that we live and we have life through Jesus and we have justice in God and justice and God is gonna pour his justice on the unjust at the end of the world see God has given us every opportunity to do it ourselves and man has failed every single time we can't do it without God, so God has done it all for us, and He will complete it when He returns and give us everlasting life. I mean, this is, what are you teaching? What in the world are you teaching here? A thousand years where you're going to have a, a a smoke shop or something? What, what is this? I'm in the Millennial Temple, and all those who love the Lord who are saints. Ah, I can't take any more. I appreciate this uh, wedding. I think I've rambled on long enough. I guess I gotta address uh, Mr. Reincarnation. Um, who was you? I'm just curious. Who was you in your life before this one? Was you was you the Lord Jesus Christ and your Jesus Christ reincarnated? Or is you somebody else? I'm just curious. Alright, All right, so verse says, da, 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 da. what? To the one who overcomes, meaning one person. He's talking about Revelation 3, right? Oops, is this it? Yeah. In Revelation 3, alright, to him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also over overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. Uh, the verse says to the one who overcomes meaning one person only what well, only one person is going to be saved I'm, well let me guess that one person it's going to be you isn't it you and Jesus that's it nobody else right, that's a heck of a religion you got there partner I don't want anything to do with it it wouldn't matter right because uh, even if I wanted to to join your religion I can't be saved it's just you and the big fella Jesus is speaking to one man in each of these verses in Revelation he is speaking to the coming son of man oh, hey, my mistake let's see All right, he's talking to the son of oh well I guess I have to ignore the fact that it never mentions never mentions son of man but okay well it's you and the big fella so you would know right it does not say to him or to he or to whoever no, it doesn't I thought well I must oh it does actually it actually does say to him that overcomes it actually does say that right there it does not say to him or to he or to whoever in the Greek language that it was written in it says to the one uh, that's not Greek that's English to the one that's I can read that 
that's not Greek. I guess I don't know, because I don't know a lick of Greek. You ever heard the expression, it's all Greek to me? Well, that means I have no idea. It's all, I, I don't know nothing, right? But what I do know is that two, the one is English. I know that. It's not Greek, I don't think. I think I could be wrong. Maybe to the one. To the, I mean, that sounds an awful lot like English, man. Just, just saying. If I had to guess, I would say that's English and not Greek. That's, that's what I would say. So much for your King James. Oh, you just, you just, I guess you got me, didn't you? Boy, you got me good that time. You got me real good because I don't know, I have any idea how you know what your mother did to you I really don't I mean this is the insanity um, so, wow that's a great question right there in the Greek language that it was written in it says to the one source so you know I mean you could have a Greek book that says to the one and it's still inferior to my Bible that I hold in my hands I mean that let's just imagine all right let's just play this scenario out there's John from the book of Revelation all right let's say that John uh, was approached by an angel and the angel said right can I find that verse here uh, well, wait a second wait a second um it was not the angel it's Jesus Jesus came to John okay so let's imagine the certain scenario Jesus comes to John and he says right and what he writes down is a piece of paper okay that is still in existence today that very piece of paper let's say is is of the Greek language all right and on in that Greek language it says whatever I can't tell you because I don't know a lick of Greek no matter what it says regardless of what it says let's say it's still legible clearly today and easily read even today let's just pretend that, that scenario that that writing is inferior to the Bible that I hold in my hands it's inferior to uh, anything it's inferior to anything that is uh, God's Word today okay let me explain it this way it, <laughs> let's see how do I do this here in the law it is written that men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people and yet for all that will they not hear me saith the Lord so the Word of God exists in all languages for all time what was this written in first Corinthians 14 it doesn't matter it could have been written in Chinese it could have been written in Greek it does not matter what language it was written in it's true in all languages for all time forever and ever all right now it's just amazing to me 
This is one of these verses that goes in one ear and straight out the other. People that point to the Greek, they cannot comprehend what this means at all. At all. And yet, for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. They just don't want to read, they just don't want to understand this. They don't want to comprehend it. They don't want to think about it because it destroys their ability to deceive people. All right, and that's the trick. That's the same thing that the serpent was doing in Genesis chapter 3 when he said to the woman, Yea, has God said, getting Eve to doubt the word of God. So also is the serpent doing the same thing today, saying, Oh, yea, has God said to him that overcomes? Nay. You got to go back to a different language that you don't know. And in this different language that nobody knows, it says something else. See, it doesn't say to, to people that are saved, it says to one person, and that one person's me, and it's not you. <laughs> and therefore, you can't. The, that proves the Bible's wrong. It proves King James is full of translational errors. The problem that I would have is that you don't have any foundation. To stake that claim. No, there is no originals. There is no one manuscript that you, that you use as your foundation. And all these modern translations are based on Roman Catholic manuscripts. Every single one of them. It's insanity, man. You're pointing to an imaginary. Bible that does not exist. You do understand, do you not, that the Greek language is not the Bible? Do you understand that? It's a language. It's like saying, my coffee cup is an automobile. It's not. It's not the same thing at all. It's not even close to the same thing. It's like saying my cat is a bird. It's not the same thing at all. Well, it's true that my cat eats birds, but it's not a bird. It can't fly. It's not the same thing at all. You're delusional to imagine that this is the Bible. It's not. And, I mean, it's just pure insanity, man. Wedden was talking about the insanity of this guy. I mean, this is another level of insanity. It really is. In Zephaniah chapter 3, it talks about in the life to come, in the resurrection, we will be given a pure language. So all the languages that are spoken today they're going to be done away with, all right? So how in the world are you going to explain that to Jesus that we got to we got to speak the the Greek and the Hebrew? Without it, we can't know what God says. Why would you take that angle? Why would you do that? Why would you say that? that's what the Muslims do? The Muslims say you can't understand the Quran unless you read it in the original language, Arabic. It's insanity. We're not preaching from a fairy tale. We're preaching from the living word of God. All right, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The Word of God transcends all languages for all time, forever and ever. You are stuck in a dead language that nobody knows and nobody understands, and you are using 
this to gain some sort of an advantage? I mean, if you think about it, what are you gaining by claiming that I can't trust the Bible that I hold in my hands? What are you trying to gain? What is it that that you want to accomplish here? If you're not driven to create doubt, what are you driven to? Because you don't have any book that you can point to and say this is the perfect pure word of God. It's all imagination. Every bit of your thought is imagination. Every, I mean, there is just absolutely no book that you can point to as your foundation. Whereas I have a book that I hold in my hands and I know it's from God. All right, so. The source is the source. Well, it just it just is, because I said it is, and of course that, that all depends on your what the definition of is, is, the original Greek text from which all Bible. There is no original Greek text. What are you talking about? The Westcott and Hort Greek text, the uh, the Westcott and Hort Greek New Testament, or whatever the heck they call that. There is no original Greek text. From which all Bible translations, from which all Bible translations of the Greek New Testament is taken. No, that's not the uh, all the modern translations are based on the Westcott and Hort Greek New Testament, which is comprised of Roman Catholic manuscripts. It, it doesn't matter, but that I mean that's the reality. You don't need to understand that stuff. You don't need to study that stuff. All you need is to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. Believe and know that it is from God. That's all you need. You don't need to know the history of all the manuscripts. I know people are curious, but if you understand that the Word of God is spirit and it is life, that it transcends forever, throughout all languages for all time that's really all you need to know all right and then once you know that then you realize well you know these all all these old manuscripts they don't matter they don't mean nothing what we have today is living and it is powerful it is truth and it is greater than all the old manuscripts all the old pieces of paper even the very words of the very uh, paper that John wrote to when Jesus instructed him to write the Word of God is more powerful in your Bible in my Bible than it is in that piece of paper that John wrote you think about the tables of stone that God gave Moses, I mean, God used his own finger to write on these tables of stone. The Word of God that we have today is greater than those tables of stone that God writ, wrote on some 3,000, 530, however long ago it was, 3,500 years ago, or however long it was when this happened. The Word of God today is greater than those tables of stone which are dust today. But you think about what did Moses do when he had the Bible written with the finger of God? He smashed it. That's what he thinks of the originals. Those originals mean nothing. Those papers, they mean nothing. The languages they mean nothing the Word of God endures all languages for all time forever and ever alright so if you don't get it man you get it don't you yeah. you get it 
but if these guys don't get it what can you do you can't change you can't you know you can't hit them over the head and then all of a sudden they're gonna get it Man. this clown who owns this channel seems to think that I know I'm I know I agree with you buddy I'm with you but this is what he says he says this clown who owns this channel seems to think that the Apostle John spoke old English I know he didn't I don't think that either and wrote the book of Revelation in the English language of King James I've never made that claim and that's silly you know it and I know it oh and God only speaks English too according to him LOL that's hilarious huh he <laughs> yeah no if uh, I don't know how many times I could say this really God speaks all languages for all time forever and ever I mean you want to do an LOL you think that God only speaks in old languages the old language excuse me <clears throat> excuse me you think that God only speaks not you I'm talking to this guy he this guy here thinks that God only speaks in the Greek language and that language is dead and that you can't know what God says unless you learn that dead language All right. so LOL that you don't believe God can speak in the English language LOL you think that the Word of God is only in the Greek. You can only understand the Word of God in the Greek. And then you go to Zephaniah. Let's go there real quickly. Hold that thought here. Uh, you're going to get a big LOL out of this. Where am I at here? You're going to LOL out your pants. You're going to LOL out of your pants. Not you you don't wear pants for then will I turn to the people a pure language wait a second so this guy who says we have to go to the Greek how's he gonna explain to Jesus that well I, wait a second we can only understand the Word of God in Greek and nobody now you've given us a pure language we're not gonna know what it says in Greek we gotta learn the Greek. The Greek can all, only the Greek is pure. So why would you give us this? I'm mean, this luck. Uh, the bottom line is that if you can't figure it out, uh, there's a reason for it. All right. Uh, so what do you mean the father's not here? Yeah. Okay, so that's that's just brilliant. Here we go. The father. There we go. The father's not God. Uh, I said the father is not a god. Well, <laughs> wow. Uh, Alright, so reincarnation and uh, you can only you can only learn the word of God by reading Greek which I, I don't have any chance. If that were true, I'm doomed. I am doomed. And then now you say that the father is not God. That's just brilliant okay so yeah uh, great conversation there appreciate yeah I appreciate it too all right I, I think that's it isn't it okay I'm done all right have a great thanks for these comments man these are great this is outstanding good job out of you guys all right uh, immortal souls I'm telling you uh, the Pope is not the representative of Jesus Christ the Pope is not God Almighty he is not the Holy Father the Pope is the Antichrist the Pope is the great whore of Revelation 17 
the Roman Catholic Church is the Roman Empire which is the fourth beast of Daniel and get out of it get out of her come out of her my people